that's all we need. The love of God shed abroad in our hearts. And you'll hug anybody. You'll hug anybody. You don't care who they are. Just so they got a soul. Well, God wants us saved. God wants the world saved. He said to the apostles, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Go tell them that. Go tell them that. You remember, my friend, that Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, one time when he was on earth, Mary and Martha and Lazarus was his great friends. He seemed to hang around them. He hung around them quite a bit. And one time he's gone off a long time. He returned back. Come in there and one of the sisters met him and told him that our brother Lazarus is dead. He's dead. Jesus Christ told him, said, Now I'm the resurrection and I am the light. Show me where you laid him. He did. Show me where you laid him. Has him over there to the grave where the Lazarus was buried. And got over there and they showed him where it was. And he said, well, one of the sisters was trying to keep him from raising because he'd been dead four days and now he's stinking. Now that word stinks not the word to use in television age like this, but it's all right. It was back there. And Jesus said stink. Jesus said stink, and I'm going to say stink. Y'all don't agree with me. You can't do nothing about it. <laughs> you know what? We would have wanted, we don't say stink. We would have said to him, don't say stink, say he's modified. <laughs> well, that stink right on. <laughs> Did you know we're going to have to learn not try to be so proper and say the words that are suitable, but tell the truth about it. Show me where you laid him. I'm not concerned about him stinking. I don't mind him stinking. Show me where you laid him. Jesus walked up to the grave where they laid him and called him by his name. Called him by his name. Well, why did he call him by his name? He didn't ever want everybody in the cemetery to get up. <laughs> He could have raised them all just as well as he did last week. And another point I score on right there. Somebody said, Brother Keeble, I don't believe in calling names. Why, Jesus called names. He called him Lazarus. Is that right? Because he don't want nobody else to get up. He could have raised them all just, and then he told those sisters, I'm the resurrection. I am the light. Now, don't come telling me how long he's been dead. Call him out in the grave, up top left. Nobody else bothered. My Savior done that when he walked among men. Call him out of the grave. Been dead four days. Yeah, then that's what we want to be. Call people by their name. If a Baptist is in the audience, if he loves his name like he's wearing, he ought to mind you call his name. No, he won't be the time. What if a preacher calls names today? Uh, if you don't mind, he's disposed of. And he, he run off the, he run the audience off. He run everybody off. They just pay him and get rid of him. That's the man you need. You want to tell people who he's talking about. Jesus done it. And I remember Peter and John going up to the temple to our prayer. And a lame man was laying there, asking arms. Peter and John admitted something that we preachers won't admit. Me and John are broke. <laughs> what you want, John and I don't have. And I never met a preacher in my life that wasn't broke. And the brother they're going to see when he stays broke. <laughs> now, <laughs> now then, friends, the day is rapidly coming. And Brother Bud knows I'm telling the truth. We're going to have to tell it like it's written. You're going to have to tell like God wants us so people will know who you're talking about. And another thing, you're going to have to stop the preacher. If you're going to stop any preacher from preaching, stop that cigarette smoker from preaching. God no business standing up before orders if he's a cigarette smoker. Yes, that's right, gentlemen. Too many of the members of the church smoking cigarettes, wasting God's money. That's what we're doing. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Well, 
that's right, keep him cowardly. That's a good way to keep him humble. Encourage him if he's calling names. Tell the people who you're talking about. That's one thing I like about our president. And nobody don't like him much either. He tells you right plain what he's talking about. He does. He's just uh, about as plain a president as we've had. And you want to wake people up and cause people to learn the truth, tell it so they can understand. Don't mix it up. Don't be afraid to preach it in season and out of season. What does he mean about in season? When they like it, out of season, when they don't like it. <laughs> but you know, it's out of season right now. Y'all ain't liking too much what I'm saying. You're just out of good manners. Uh, respected men, and I appreciate that. But I do say we ought to be teacher break to preach plain and simple gospel of Christ. So when they come forward, tell him he ain't got no religion. Tell him he's got no business wearing that name. Tell him he's got no business moaning all night around at the altar trying to come through. You, you'll find people coming to Christ, coming to Christ. Well, the young wrote me a letter after I got home from Pepperdine College that she was, since you left here, everybody's still discussing that sermon you preached there. Everybody is, the students. And when the students from the Lipton got back to David Lipton College, he said they couldn't control them in the classroom, talking about what happened that Sunday morning when 200 there. They were so happy. And students were so glad they heard Brother Keeble call him names. And so many of them come forward to obey the gospel until they couldn't talk about nothing but that meeting. That's the way they do it. I want to send you all home this morning so you won't talk about nobody but me. <laughs> getting Keeble, getting Keeble. I know what you're going to do. I know that you're black. But I want to preach it so that God will be pleased with what I'm talking about this morning. If I didn't think I was pleasing God, I wouldn't say a word like I already said. I believe God indulged me that every step of the way. Trying to teach young preachers to be bold and courageous. And above everything, live it. Don't walk around with preachers and take the church's money and smoke, the ba- uh, smoke cigarettes and chew tobacco. And you mothers that's raising children, stop sitting around there with a box of snuff, dipping it while you run your ch- the mother sitting in there now with a box of snuff in the place. <laughs> you, know, you don't need no snuff dippers, poison stuff like that. Don't you don't need that. And what are the, you know that you, you can dismiss the audience and step outdoors after the brother just took the Lord's supper and cigarette butts all around the front of the door as they went out. What's the matter? They were thinking about that while they're taking the supper. His mind wasn't on the Lord's supper. There's cigarette in his pocket. Like to thank you, brother. Thank you. I'm glad you were here. But it, anyway, 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 we're going to have to preach the gospel. We're going to have to let the people know that God don't want to throw his cigarettes and smoking his money out and blowing it in the air and men starving for the gospel. Our missionaries wouldn't have to suffer if all the money that's given for tobacco and stuff and cigarettes was put in his treasure to help missionaries. They wouldn't have to suffer like they suffer. Take God's money and blow it out in the air. I don't do nothing but break one thing from smoking cigarettes today. I've been a blessing. You know somebody in here is going to throw them cigarettes away. So get straight. Standing out there blowing God's money out in the air. And the women dipping stuff sitting on the ground. <laughs> You're going to learn that. You're going to learn it. And you know somebody's worried today. What are we going to do with the juveniles? What are, oh, that's a great question now. Well, that ain't no question. I'm asking the question. What are you going to do with the parents that raised them? There you are. You give a boy a key and tell him to come in when he gets ready. You turn him loose on the world. He got no business with the keys. Knock on the door and you let him in. Then you'll know when he got in. Day is rapidly coming, brother. You're going to have to control your family. You're going to have to control your children the best you can. And then what will you do? God will bless you for raising them up. Touch not, taste not, and handle not your unclean thing. You're going to have to do it. Got some women saying amen. That's on you. You're going to dead right on, so long just stay in line. All right, amen. Don't let me shame you now. Just amen. And when a thing is right, it's right. And Brother Keeble has to have courage 
or any other preacher to preach the gospel today. You're going to have to have the uh, courage and boldness and determination to preach in season and out of season. Thank you, thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. And I want you to see this, brother. You're going to have to preach it. Stop smoking, blowing it out in the air. Stop dipping stuff, stop standing around. And another thing, you you go to go home this morning. Uh, if you are not here at home, you wherever you go, you go home, and all the beer, all is in the fridge, and they're cooling off. Throw it all out in the yard. I know a Christian with beer and stuff stored away in his fridge, and there he's not a Christian. That child got to look at. No wonder there's so many drunkards today. He looked at it all his days. Throw it away in the fridge, and there. Look how quiet everybody is. I'm quiet. I don't blame you all for being quiet. You take that stuff out of your fridge in there. One white sister sang to me at San Bernardino, of California. She said, Brother Keith, the reason I came forward, you converted me about those cigarettes. I got a pack in my pocket now. I'm throwing them away. Never buy another one. Well, if I didn't do nothing but save her, I don't know if they would worry this. Or worry this thing. Save our children. Save our families. Save from all of this field. Throw it away in the fridge and there, getting ready. Sitting there, can't hardly take the Lord's supper. But think about a cool drink. A cool drink. Cool it all. Brother, the day is rapidly coming. And you go home and you go home. Think about what Brother Keeble said to you. And you know one white lady came forward in now meeting in Nashville. That other day, young lady, about 18. I've got three minutes. Well, I can do this in three minutes. <laughs> I, I can do this. This is what I'm fixing to do. In three minutes, I can tell you that you're going to have to live right in front of your children. You're going to, if you don't want them to smoke, don't you smoke. If you don't want them to drink beer, take it out of the fridge of that. Take it out of the fridge and spend your money for, and this white lady said, Brother Keeble, I wasn't baptized until I went home and sold every cigarette away and all the beer out of the fridge of that. Then I came back and obeyed the gospel. What is the matter with her? Laying aside everything that stirred, disgust. Want to walk right the balance of her day? Mind made up. Mind made up. I hope I've got somebody's mind made up. I hope I've got somebody willing to do away with all this trash in the home and let your children have the privilege of living in a home where cigarettes are not smoked and where they don't drink beer and whiskey and play. One said, Brother Keeble, I had to go home and throw away five decks of cards. I'll invite my neighbors over and we have card games and, and then we drink a little beer, cool beer out the fridge. Well, how are you going to convert a neighbor drinking with you? And in my conclusion, I offer you these ar this argument. I took, I said something to shake you and make you conscious of the fact that you're not pleasing God. I want to thank the brethren for giving me this permission. And if I, if my friends can remember this, I'll always rejoice over the fact that I was invited to the free Georgia or Harding College. Free, free Harding College. I get these, I get these colleges all mixed up. I'm on my way to Abilene now to talk just along this same line. I'm speaking to it, and the brother said, Keeble, you're pulling the right straight. Thank God now my I know I've gone over three minutes, but I'm gonna do what the scriptures tell me. Ask forgiveness. 